Welcome to the Dr. April Jasper Show, relevant conversations for business owners of today. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast. We appreciate being a part of your life and being invited into your day. It is such a joy to be able to help our colleagues to bring value to their patients and to help you strengthen and grow your business. Join us at optometricmanagementeducation.com where you can learn more about all of the other services we provide. We have a subscription service that you can be a part of where you can learn and teach your team from the courses that we've recorded on all of the topics that are relevant to your success. We also have consulting services. And right now, if you give us a call, schedule a call with me, I'll be happy to talk to you about what we can do to help you grow your business one-on-one. Welcome everyone. We're glad to be back again, talking about the 10 ways to recession-proof your practice. So David, we've made it through, let's see, seven of them. Seven, yep. This is number eight. Yeah. And I feel like we really haven't had a whole lot of time to spend on each of them. So you guys tell us which one you want to hear more about. And we can walk through a whole lot more detail on Mm -hmm. those if you want us to. So definitely reach out, let us know. But the one we're on now, which I don't know if we really had an order to it, we kind of did. So, I mean, we started with create your practice of distinction. And that truly should be the beginning. Yeah. Because if you don't know what you want, it's kind of like building your house. Right. And now you do what you want to do inside. Yep. So that's where creating your practice of distinction is so important because you're building your house, creating your framework, Mm -hmm. and now you're filling up the inside, making it beautiful and making it just the way you have always dreamed of. Right. Love it. It's funny because I do think about that. I think of that every time we do something new and fun in the practice and we try something new. It's, uh, It's so much fun to me because you get to see what the results will look like and how is this going to work for our patients? How is right. it going to work for us? Yep. All right. So everybody's wondering what we're going to talk about. So I'll stop rambling. What? Utilize technology. Utilize technology. <laughs> David beat me How to it. How about I stop you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we believe in technology. Do you have remember? for a long time. Yeah, we have. So our we've first office. We've been paying for it for a long time. David writes the checks. I just am the dreamer and I say, hey, we should do this, honey. It would be great. Yeah. Patients will love it. Yeah, they will. I'm sure. All right. So what was really our uh, biggest reason we didn't have even more technology than we did back in the old days in the first office? What were some of the reasons? Yeah. Square footage. We had, you tell them because I don't want to get it wrong. What was our space? 896 square feet. Okay. See, I told you David would have it right on the money. Oh, yeah. We didn't have a whole lot of space. And so we, at the time, had an OCT. Mm-hmm. We had an autorefractor. We, and we chose every instrument so carefully. Yeah. We, camera. Yeah, we had a camera. Oh, my goodness. But do you remember when we bought the practice, yes. the camera that we had? What yes. was it? It was a Polaroid. <laughs> we should have kept it. It would yeah. probably be a collector's edition. We should have put that in storage. Yes, kept it. I honestly, though, Dr. Mextroth was amazing. For him to have the technology he had, even though we giggle today, our kids could laugh at us too. I mean, the technology that exists today that has happened just since they've been born. Oh, man. They're going to laugh at us a whole lot more. And they're not laughing at us. They're laughing with us. Can you imagine life without an iPhone at this point? No. I, I, I mean, it's wow. Even where were we the other day? Our we were at phones. somebody's office. This gentleman is amazing. He owns many companies and he's got this computer sitting right next to him. And he goes, I don't know why, but I end up doing almost all my business on my phone. <laughs> it's just there with you it's all the easy. time. Yeah. So technology. Steve Jobs knew way at the beginning yeah. that if he created technology that we couldn't live without, mm-hmm. that brought value to us, then we wouldn't be able to live without it. Yep. And so if you think about the phone, why do we need it? Why do we say we can't live without it? Everything's on it. Yeah, everything that everything we need. Everything is on it. All it, your, Whether it's banking or travel, oh man. Brings value. Yep. But you know, at first they had to convince us of that. Mm-hmm. I don't think at first any of us really understood what it could do. So that was one of the challenges. And yeah. every company out there that's listening, just know that I might believe you have a great piece of technology, but other doctors aren't going to get it Mm -hmm. and they're not going to see it until it's shown to them. And I've always said the biggest challenge for any of us in practice and buying new technology is understanding how to implement it, 
how to talk about it, how to communicate the benefits to patients, and then Put how to... Put it in to, your processes? Yeah, how to fit it into the process. David, you remember we went to visit a practice one time. So that's the beauty of what we do. We get to visit a whole lot of practices. We love being in your office and helping you to find ways you can do things better. And honestly, we learn so much from everybody we go see. 100%. But what I tell you is, is one of the most disappointing things for me, for you, is when I walk into a practice and I see technology that I know you paid thousands of dollars for sitting in a corner Mm or in a dark room, turned off with a cover on top. Yep. And that just is heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking because I know how much it cost you. Mm-hmm. I know how much you had dreams and hopes for that technology. And sometimes, many times, it's technology that could be doing amazing things for you in your practice and bringing great value to your patients. Yeah. And so technology to me is all about the value it brings to my patients. We used to buy it if I could bill for it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that that was wrong completely, but we don't do that anymore. We really, I mean, it's great to have a way that you can bill for it. So bill the insurance is what I mean, so that you can pay for it. It's going to depend on your model of practice too. So obviously you're not going to, some practices aren't going to have that much medical. So So they're never going to be able to bill for it is what you're saying. Yeah. But that that doesn't mean you shouldn't have it. So I'll finish my statement. I used to buy it. Only because could I bill. could bill for it. And mm-hmm. if I couldn't, I wouldn't have it because right. I didn't know how to take it. And if I couldn't bill for it, turn it into value add for my patients. Right. If you suffer from dry, scratchy, irritated eyes, the problem may actually stem from your eyelids. Cleansing eyelids daily is essential for maintaining healthy eyes, which is why doctors recommend OcuSoft Lid Scrub Allergy Eyelid Cleanser. New OcuSoft Lid Scrub Allergy removes oil, pollen, and other contaminants from your eyelids to effectively reduce redness, irritation, and itching caused by seasonal allergies. These pre-moistened wipes are easy to use, on the go, or at home. Simply wipe and leave on. As the industry standard of care, OcuSoft has a full line of eyelid cleansers for various conditions. Available through eye care professionals, most retail outlets, and Amazon.com. Visit OcuSoft.com for more details. And so we've figured it out a whole lot better now. Mm -hmm. We bring in new technology, but not until I know that in my mind, I am committed Mm -hmm. to making it a part of the process, at least until I know it can't be. Well, it's because we have to take it back and now we have to sell our staff right? It's yes. not just a matter of bringing it and plugging it in and it's on the table, use it. Right. It's not the way it works. It's, we've done it many times and it doesn't work and people won't, they won't use it. Yeah. So it's an all in, you have to get it and you have to go all in us and the staff. I think the two things that we've ever purchased that didn't fit that model were basically just like David said, the first one we brought in was first, it was ahead of its time. So it was a technology to be yeah. able to put your frames, all the glasses yeah. into the system and have people people be able to shop online. And it was a great idea, but the frame companies wouldn't work with us to put yeah. their product out there. Yeah. So that stopped us. That was a long time ago. And we had no idea it would be a problem. And then the other issue was since the frame companies wouldn't help us, it was all our work that was going to have to be done to make it happen. And yeah. we just didn't have the time, energy, and couldn't do it. No. And our team was not in agreement at all no we were we were (laughs) slam busy from nine to five we were packed with patients and now here we are trying to build this thing too no right wasn't gonna happen wasn't the right time it wasn't Mm -hmm. a good model and uh i in the old days used to say yes to companies before i thought through what it would mean to us and so we do a lot better job now but at the same time i think that you'll see in our practice more technology than Mm -hmm. just about any other office yeah and yes we uh think about we want to know how we can utilize it and bill for it to the right people Mm -hmm. at the right time meaning the insurance companies but we're not going to stop if we can't no and so what technology allows you to do number one provides value to patients because it gives us a better way to be able to care for them Mm -hmm. every day i tell patients when they come in and they exclaim exclaim about how much technology we have and i say absolutely we love it we invest in it because Mm -hmm. we want to always be able to tell you that the results we get today are going to be the best you could ever get. Yep. And we don't want to miss anything. Right. 
So every year, basically, when they come in, there's something new. There's some uh, wonderful piece of technology that is there for the purpose of helping us provide better care of them and bring value. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't do that, I don't want it. Right. And it's historical, right? We're building a history right. with, the, with that equipment. And we can save all that. And we have all the information from 10 years ago. Yep. And it just keeps growing and growing and growing. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible the times that I can tell you that I have been able to discover or find something that's wrong with a patient that I wouldn't have seen without the technology that we have. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also are blessed to be able to travel and talk to our colleagues and all around the country and mm -hmm. group settings as well. And I'll share cases, patient cases and how technology's made a difference for us and how we utilize technology. Mm -hmm. So basically in our practice, when you come in for an exam, you're going to come in for your testing. We're going to do all the measurements ahead of time. So we want to know exactly what's going on with our patients. By the time you walk in the door, we know what your eye health status is. We know what the likelihood is that we're, we're going to be able to get a patient to see perfect based on all of the eye health status. Yep. And what that enables us to do is save you time as a patient save you the energy of having to go through this again somewhere else if we find something but don't have the technology to diagnose it. And then the third thing it does really for us is it allows us to be able to celebrate the success or the positive things we see and uh, be able to show concern for any challenge. And like David said, create a history so that when we have you back, we can compare looking for change. It's incredible to be able to do what we can do today. To me, it's as oh, yeah. big a thing as the iPhone. Yeah. An eye exam today is so different than it was in the past if we as doctors choose to make it so. Mm -hmm. And so what's really cool about eye care, what's really cool about optometry, and that's what's wonderful about your optometrist and about us, all of you listening that are optometrists, is that we're the gatekeeper. We are the ones patients come to first to find out, is there anything that's going on that I need to see somebody else? Can you take care of everything for me here? And by the way, Dr. Jasper, I want to have the best vision possible when I leave and know that there's nothing going on that you missed or that someone could have missed because you had the technology to be able to discover it. Right. And I think it's so fun. It's incredible. It's satisfying. And patients believe the same thing. I mean, oh, you can yeah. see it in our reviews. And so that's the other proof that we have. If you go back and you look at our reviews, mm -hmm. yeah. what have we tried to do in the past, Dave? Remember how we like to pull those reviews and set them up for patients or for our staff to see? Yeah, we still do. We'll print them out. Yeah, we'll, we'll print them and we'll go over them. And, and there's an article I wrote. I'll see if we can uh, put it in our free resources for you. But this article that I wrote talks about how important it is to take those reviews and be able to emphasize with your team the things you're doing right. Mm -hmm. And it talks about uh, neuroplasticity. What a strange thing. Well, the reason we talk about neuroplasticity is because in this article, I lay the groundwork for how we used to think in the old days that once we were adults, your brain is what it is. Right. There's no regeneration. There's no changing it. The way it is is the way it is. You're stuck. We know now that's absolutely false. And right. we should have known all along. Look at athletes. Yeah. I mean, when athletes break world records, they're grown people, you know? Yeah. yeah. And yet they still can do what people have said forever was not possible. Mm-hmm. So what does that have to do with our teams, neuroplasticity, reviews? Well, let me bring it back together. What we know is that positive reinforcement, positive thinking, there is so much power in it mm -hmm. because it encourages us to continue to think that way. If we see that doing things well in our practice and we can see what patients love about what we do, so we know what to do more of. But if we see yep. that doing things right, doing yep. things well, doing things in a good, positive way results in patients saying, I love you, this is incredible, or best I've ever had, or best vision I've ever had. Yep. When you see that over and over and over again, everyone on the team then wants to live it right. over and over and over again. Right. But here's what's really cool about neuroplasticity. The key is you have to spend time in that moment.
Your eyes and your vision are under attack, damaging blue light from the sun. Your phone, your computer, your tablet, even light bulbs and car headlights is constantly bombarding you. The good news is our eyes actually already have a line of defense to counter the effects of blue light. This defense is made up of three pigments called carotenoids. MacU Health with Micromycel, the only supplement with the exclusive patent on all three macular carotenoids and Micromycel technology. So that's why David will print out the reviews. Uh, my mom, who works for us as well, she'll print out the reviews and we'll take our time tearing them apart to look to see what people say they like, mm -hmm. what we're doing well. Right. And when they say there's something that didn't go well, we're not afraid to look at it and say, hey, how did we mess that up? Right. What could we do different? Call them up. And I'm the leader, so I yep. take responsibility. I tell them all the time, hey, if something goes wrong, it's my fault. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it comes back to me. And if you as the leader can't take responsibility for it, then that is a challenge that I would have for you to back up and say, when it goes wrong, take responsibility, look for the reason, the five reasons, five whys is what we talk about in medical yep. errors courses. Keep digging until you get to the reason and then make a fix. All right, but we talked about technology. Boy, I got a long ways from Yeah, it. where'd that come from? The reviews. Yep. So that's how I do have, tie it all together. And we have the reviews all over the office. Yes. Honestly, oh, yeah, we, we print have, them. We have a, I think we have them on the doors. We have them on the windows. We have them inside yep. on different mirrors. And uh, people see that and they're just, it's not, it's not made it's up. Not it's fake. real stuff. Exactly. They can go on the website and they can see. It's not fake yet. I mean, they say chat GPT is going to fake oh, everything, but wow. not yet. Anyway. Okay, Dave, so let's bring this all together and let's go back to something I asked on the last episode and probably on most of them. And this is, a, I think, a way for me to think about it and wrap it all up. If, as a patient, you have choices, mm -hmm. which you do, mm -hmm. let's just say, to keep it all the same, let's just say that we have, uh, we're providers on the same insurance plan that right. that patient's on. Right. And of course, there's 50 others that they could go to, especially in Palm Beach County, right. that are on the same insurance. Mm -hmm. First of all, we don't want every patient. We don't have room for them. And not every patient's going to love what we do and what we offer. So that's fine. And that's a good lesson. Remember, you don't need everyone. You want the customers that want you. And that's really a key lesson, too, mm -hmm. that took me a long time to figure out. But let's go back to the question. Now you're a patient. You have choices. Do you want to go to... A doctor that has the latest in technology so that they can be more efficient, have better accuracy, get you in and out, knowing that when your visit is over, you know everything about your eyes that you possibly could. Right. And you know the best way to be able to provide you with great vision for a lifetime. Right. Whether that's contacts, glasses, um, lid scrubs eye drops, vitamins, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And I listed those because that's exactly what it is. It's not a hard answer. So yeah, go <laughs> ahead. What, what, where do you want to go? What doctor do you want to see? That's where I'm going to be. I can tell you that right now. Yeah. And that goes with everybody, whether you're going to an orthopedic or yep. uh, your pediatrician, you, you just yeah. want the best and you want them, them to have the best and you want them to use the best. Even a gym, you know, think about it. We have that yeah. new gym that's here in, in town that... Mm -hmm. has a place to eat. They oh, yeah. have the latest technology. They have a hair salon. Yeah. They have uh, clothes and shoes you can buy. I mean, <laughs> I'm not saying it's my thing, right. but they're going to attract uh, a, a group of people. That's what they're building their business on mm -hmm. that want everything as close to them as they can. They want to conserve time. Right. And that's the other thing technology does is it helps our exams to be accurate, efficient, efficient, so people get in and out mm -hmm. fast, at least as fast as they want to. Give right. them as much time as they want to to shop yep. and know that next year we're going to do the same thing. And that's what you meant by historical, right? Right. I love it. Yeah. I mean, it's, again, common sense, as Brendan Bouchard said, but common sense isn't always common practice. Right. So hopefully you have fun listening to these. We can reinvigorate you and encourage you and motivate you to go back to the drawing board look at the technology you currently have mm -hmm. and look at what you need but don't just determine technology's usefulness
based on what I can bill for it to an insurance company. Right. Instead, look and see how it brings value to your practice. Right. And that means your team and your patients. Mm -hmm. And if you have a question, ask. We're yes. here. We forget to tell them that. Yeah. Definitely ask and <laughs> uh, go to our free resources page to see some articles and follow up for uh, other things that we have there for you to be able to help you yep. to be able to implement some of these things we talk about. Thank you so much. We have two more to go in this series. So listen to us next week. You got it. <laughs> <laughs>